Statistics and Mechanics, Paper 3, Mathematics Advanced Level. Answer all questions and ensure that your answers to pass of questions are clearly labeled. You should show sufficient working to make your methods clear. Answers without working may not gain full credit. The total mark for this paper is 100. At time t seconds where t is greater than or equal to zero, a particle p moves in the xy plane in such a way that its velocity is given by that expression. When t equals to one, p is at the point A, and when t equals to four, p is at the point B, find the exact, val exact distance A, B. So we're going to be using some of this formula here. I've just put them in bracket in red. Velocity is this, the velocity is ds over dt, differential of displacement over time. Acceleration is dv over dt. Acceleration is d squared s over dt. Displacement is integral of velocity with respect to time, and velocity is integral of acceleration with respect to time. So as you go down this way, you differentiate, you're going up that way, you integrate. So it's important to remember that. So we want to, to get R, we integrate V dt. When you integrate, you add one to the power and then you divide by that new power. So T to the minus a half, you add one to minus a half and divide by minus a half plus one. <coughs> when you add one to minus a half, you get a half. So it, t to the half divided by a half. You add one to t to the power one, it becomes t squared, and then you divide by two. So it's t to the half i over half minus four t squared over two j plus c. Don't forget the constant of integration. Four divided by two, you will get two. So that's what r is equal to. Now we need to substitute in t is four and t is one into r so when t is equals to four we're going to substitute four there for t plus c and that will give us this expression r is equals four i plus 32 j plus c and that's your ob so we're going to do it next and substitute t is equals to one Next, we're going to use the time is equals to one. We'll substitute t is equals to one in there. And that will give us two i minus two j plus c. Now, a, b is the same as o, b minus o, a. So that's o, b and that's o, a. When you minus them four i minus two i, it gives you two i. Minus 32 minus minus two gives you minus 30 and c minus c will give you zero to find the absolute value of a b is two squared plus minus 30 squared it, it will give you two root two two six another way you can do it to get that two root two two six at the bottom there you can use x1 is four x2 is minus 32, y2, so x1 is 4, y1 is minus 32, x2 is 2, y2 is minus 2. And you will use the distance between 2 point x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So you get 2 minus 4 squared plus minus 2 minus minus 32 squared. Put that in your calculator, you'll get the same answer. That's another way to find that answer. Question number seven. A wooden crate of mass 20 kilogram is pulled in a straight line along a rough horizontal floor using a handle attached to the crate. They're giving us the mass is 20 kilograms and alpha is three over four. The tension in the handle is 40 Newton. The coefficient of friction between the crate and the floor is 0 0.14. 
using the model, find the acceleration of the crate. We need to get the diagram correct. If the diagram is not correct, it will make it difficult to do this question. So looking at this diagram, we have R is acting upwards, the reaction. The weight is acting downwards. Weight is mass times gravity, which is 20 G. And the reaction is acting upwards R. Frictional force, the red line I've put there is acting to the left and frictional force is equals to mu R. That tension there is 40 Newtons. So the forward force, we can have the X component of the forward force. And then there's another upward force here, which comes from the Y component of that 40 Newton. That's the force they're acting upwards. So we can do sine of alpha. Alpha is that angle there. So alpha is that angle. So sine of alpha is opposite. Sine alpha is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is Y. Hypotenuse is 40. Because this angle there is 90 degrees. So this is a right angle triangle. So that is a right angle triangle. Very important to see that. So take 40 to the left. That means Y is 40 sine alpha. So Y is 40 sine alpha. So 40 sine alpha is this upward force here. So we call this upward force 40 sine alpha. Let's look at cos alpha. Cosine of alpha is adjacent of a high hypotenuse. So this is the angle alpha, cos alpha, is adjacent, which we call this side next to it x, divided by hypotenuse, which is 40. Cos alpha is adjacent of a hypotenuse. So if we take the 40 to the left side, comes 40 times cos alpha is equals to x. So this x here is called 40 times cos alpha. And we can call it a forward force because it's pulling it to the right. So 40 cos alpha is a forward force pulling it to the right. 40 sine alpha is an upward force pulling it up. So when we resolve vertically, vertically means going up and going down. So upward force is equal to downward force. Which forces are going upward? If you look at the diagram carefully, R is going up, it's a force pulling it up. What else is pulling it up? This one here due to that 40 Newton is pulling it up. So there are two forces pulling it up. R is pulling it up, and this component of that 40 is pulling it up. So you have R plus 40 sine alpha. R is pulling it up, 40 sine alpha is pulling it up. So two things are pulling it up. How many things are pulling it down, the downward force? It's only the weight pulling it down, mg. So there's one force pulling it down. So, but it, it's not going up, it's not going down. It is staying in equilibrium in where it is. So that means the upward force is equal to the downward force. That's why we make them equal. Now, let's look at forward force minus backward force using F equals to MA. Let's resolve it horizontally. What force is pulling it forward? If you look on the diagram, the forward force is there. I put a circle around it. And it is this component of the 40 Newton. That's a forward force pulling that way. I put in red there. And the backward force is this one due to the friction, pulling it backwards. So because it is moving, the forward force is bigger than the backward force so that it can move. And that force using F equals to MA, that force, X resultant force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So forward force is the 40 cos alpha. That's the one pulling it forward. Minus the backward force, which is the friction force is F. 
is equals to m which is 20 times acceleration which we're going to find out so but do we know what f is f is equals to mu times r that's the formula to find friction so to find friction you use that formula f is mu times r now we know mu is 0.14 is given to us so it's 0.14 times r so we can start to use some of those to work out so th that's how you resolve it so our two equations are r plus 40 sine alpha is 20 g that's from the upward force equals to downward force forward force is 40 cos alpha minus resistance 0.14 r is equals to 20 a so we have two equations equation one equation two which we are going to solve now we are giving that tan alpha is equals to three over four using a triangle alpha tangent is opposite over adjacent so the three is the opposite there which is the three and the adjacent is the four using this right angle triangle where that's 90 degrees so we want to find the hypotenuse three squared plus four squared and square root of that would give you five now we need to find sine alpha sine alpha is opposite of a hypotenuse which will give us three over five cos alpha is adjacent of a hypotenuse which will give us four over five so that means let's look at equation one now r plus 40 for sine alpha we put three over five is equals to 20 for G, we put 9.8. Watch that. R plus 40 for sine alpha, we put 3 over 5, is equals to 20 times 9.8 because they said G is 9.8. That will give R to 172. Now we know force friction is mu R. We know mu is 0 0.14 is given. Now we found arrow to 172. We multiply the two together, it gives us 24.08. And now we look at equation two. 40 times cos alpha, which is four over five, minus 0 0.14, 0 0.14 r is 24.08 is equals to 20a and we want to solve for a so watch what we're going to substitute so this we're using equation two so 40 cos alpha is 4 over 5 minus 0.14 r is f which is 24.08 is equals to 20 times a and a is what we want to find out so rearranging solving this in your calculator and then dividing by 20 you'll get solving this left side you'll get 7.92 and dividing by 20 you get 0 0.396 or 0 0.40 meters per second squared for a so the acceleration of the crate is 0 0.396 of 0 0.40 meters per second squared that's what they ask us to do to find the acceleration of the crate. Question 7b, explain briefly why the acceleration of the crate would now be less than the acceleration of the crate found in part A. So you can see now you're pushing it from the front. So you're pushing it from the front. And this angle is alpha and the mass is 20. When you push in, it increases the reaction. So as you're pushing that, it increases that reaction force, which produces an increase in the available limiting friction because friction is mu R. So when you increase R, you increase friction. Friction is mu times R. So as you are pushing down, 
your increasing arrow increases and it increases friction. So friction is increased by pushing to the ground. When you're pushing down, the force causes friction. The tools, the, the box and the ground, they are pressing on each other and it's more friction. So increasing F friction will decrease your acceleration. When friction increases, your acceleration will decrease. So if you look at this from that equation too, when you make this arrow to be big, that means all of this will be a big number. And when you subtract from 40 cos alpha, this side would be small. And when it is small and you divide by 20, that will give a small a because you're making the numerator to be small. So what's happening here is you have 40 cos alpha minus 0 0.14 r divided by 20 is equals to a. So if you make r to be big, that means this top part will be small. And when you do a small thing divided by 20, a small number divided by 20, the value for acceleration will reduce.